Here's a question that no one asked ever. Why did the Mercury space capsule perform a deorbit burn even though the mission was never to achieve orbit? That stuck in traffic question answered next on Vintage Retrospect. Welcome to the Mercury Madness series and I'm your host Chad and it's great to be back in the studio. This is part one of four in a new mini-series covering the most unanswered questions about the Mercury program that took Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom to space. More specifically, these are just two of the seven astronauts and they were actually called the Mercury 7. The Mercury program paved the way for human spaceflight and also was the first human space program for the United States during the early 1960s. But enough about the history of Mercury, that's not what we're here for. Considering that this was a suborbital flight, why was a seemingly unnecessary retro rocket fired just before the capsule made its descent back into the Atlantic Ocean? Alan Shepard's suborbital trajectory would have decayed after about 10 minutes, right? Well, it's not that simple. There's a thing called thermal loads, and that's where the Mercury heat shield comes into play. NASA's data at the time suggested that a steeper re-entry angle would result in a less thermal impact on the heat shield, NASA, of course, was not going to take this chance on a manned mission of many space firsts. But there's more. Although the crew could naturally deorbit, that would place the capsule splashdown point incredibly far from the recovery ships. These ships would have to use more fuel to leave the Cape to intercept Alan Shepard. So let me know in the comments if you've ever had this question, and also please like and subscribe so that others can deorbit safely to live and learn untold things about the Mercury space program. Next on our Mercury series, launch abort testing and NASA's embarrassing moments. I am your host Chad and I will see you out on the launch pad.